part C of this question is giving us uh, the, the roots as a little bit more complicated form as in B, but we're going to essentially do the same strategy as B. So taking a look at C, I'm going to rewrite this C as 5 plus root 11 over 2 and 5 minus root 11 over 2. So we can see if we can, we can write this in this form, x is equal to 5 plus minus root 11 over 2. And it looks like the quadratic formula form. So again, I'm just going to write the quadratic formula form. So b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. And we're going to try to match the parts here. So since the denominator is 2 here, we can just say that the a value, okay, we're just going to let the a value equal to 1 to start. Okay, and then we can solve for the other parts based on the a value equal to 1. So if a is equal to 1, then I'm going to get a b value. I'm going to match up the b, b parts here. So that 5 should match the negative b in the quadratic formula. And I can then solve for the b value here as b is equal to negative 5. And then I'll go ahead and solve for c. The c part of this is going to be based on the inside equating to that part. So I'm going to write the equation 11 is equal to b squared. Well, I've already solved for b. b is going to be negative 5 minus 4. We made the assumption that a is equal to 1, and then we're just left with c to solve for. And so we get 11 is equal to 25 minus 4c. So we get negative 14 is equal to negative 4c. c works out to 14 over 4, which will simplify to 7 over 2. So we've now solved for a, b, c. So I can write that in my quadratic equation x squared minus 5x plus 7 over 2 equals 0. We can multiply everything by 2. We don't really like that divide by 2, so we're just going to make this 2x squared minus 10x plus 7 equals 0. And that's the quadratic equation that gives us those roots. So what, that would be one way, is, and this strategy is equating the parts of the quadratic formula. The other strategy would just be to, I'm just going to do this in a different color here. So the other strategy is just to write it in its root form. Now this is a little bit more complicated because we have this complex solution. Okay, so there's my first root, and then I'm going to write that in brackets there, 5 minus root 11 over 2, and that's all equal to 0. Expanding this out, I'm going to end up with x squared minus, so I'm going to take these two numbers are going to represent the coefficients on the middle term x, so 5 plus root 11 over 2 plus 5 minus root 11 over 2. And that's going to give us the middle coefficient on x. And then we're going to multiply those last two terms together. So when we multiply that together, I'm going to end up with 5 plus root 11 over 2 times 5 minus root 11 over 2. And that's going to be all equal to 0. Okay, so we can see inside the brackets here, there's, we have a plus term and a minus term that are equivalent. So we get... 5 over 2 plus 5 over 2. So this becomes x squared minus 5 over 2 plus 5 over 2 is 5. And then we're going to expand this out. So we get plus. We just multiply the fraction, the denominators first. And then in the numerator, we're going to have a difference of squares. So we get 25 minus root 11 squared is 11. And that's equal to 0. And so we end up with 14 over 4, and that simplifies to 7 over 2, which we had before.
And then we're just going to multiply both sides of that equation to get rid of that divide by 2. So 2x squared minus 10x plus 7 equals 0. And that's our quadratic equation. That's the same as I got over here. So the two strategies I've shown you here are just putting it into the bracket form, expanding out, and then simplifying the expression. The other strategy that we did here was we took, since it's in this plus minus root form, we made it look like the quadratic formula and then tried to equate the parts of that quadratic formula. Okay, we just have to make sure that every part matches when we do it in that strategy.